Hip hop's crate, hip your crate ready. What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Major out of Queens, New York, and you rocking with Hip Hop Crates. Get your crate ready. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy Major, and let's dive right into these crate questions. All right. Bear with me, y'all. I'm excited. This is my first interview. Shout out, bro. We see you've got credits for Hot 97, This Is 50, Shade 45, and BT Jams. Tell us about it and the experience. All right, so I remember, I'm gonna start with Hot 97 because I've been listening to Hot 97 since I was a kid. So um, going up there was like, it was like a dream come true. Yeah, it was, it was surreal. At the moment, like I couldn't even believe it because it happened so fast, like that's usually how everything happens. Um, it just happened so quick, but like um, somebody that I was working with out of Jersey had recommended me to an artist uh, and long story short, we had linked up and I had got the placement and we brought him up there to do an interview and stuff and it was crazy. Like, you know, just seeing like the whole operation and um, like seeing all the moving parts was like crazy to me and it was just like you know I, I knew I wanted to be there one day and also I was realizing like every place that I was visiting it like looked crazy on camera but it was just like a little small room or something you know what I'm saying like that was the funny part how they like make things look good on the camera but you know that's part of the marketing and everything but you know just even just still being there and the experience overall like, you know, being in that environment, that was crazy itself, like, you know, so just same and same with This Is 50 and, you know, when I got the BET James placement, it was like, you know, damn, like, I used to watch BET as a kid, like, this shit crazy. Um, next question. Uh, what's up next for you? Um, or uh, honestly, y'all, I know everybody's waiting on the shows and that's what I'm most excited about. Um, I can't wait to get back outside and, you know, put some events together and have some dope artists that I've really been rocking with come out and go crazy. You know what I'm saying? Everybody always hitting me up like, when's the next show? When's the next show? Um, it's coming soon, y'all. Just bear with me. Like, I'm just trying to, you know, build everything up and do it the right way. I don't want to rush my, my process or rush the the craft, like I really want to make it something worthwhile for everybody. I don't want to just do a show and, and it's just like another show, you know, but I want to make it count and make it worth it. So just bear with me. That's what's mainly on my agenda, these showcases for, and um, show opportunities for artists because I really want to have all the artists that I think are dope come out and perform. So that's what's next. Tell us a little about your upbringing and where you're from all right cool cool like i said shout out bro because um this is my first interview and you know i've been waiting to talk about talk a little bit about these things because I, I get a the the most funniest and one of my favorite low-key dms is like what do you even do <laughs> like, he would be like what do you even do like you just you just be around like what do you even do but um you know I'm gonna just tell y'all a little bit about my upbringing and where I'm from and maybe maybe some things will make sense. But, um, so yeah, um, like growing up, I was around like a lot of family. Like I was, it was always a party in my crib. Like if you ask anybody that know me and been around me since I was a kid, they would tell you like there was always a party at my crib and always, um, good food, like my mom was a cook. She always used to cook and she was like, you know, hosting these events for my family, like just every weekend. It was like nonstop, like even sometimes like, you know, I, I wanted to have a chill weekend, but it was never like that, but I, I don't regret it now, but you know, like it was just a lot of events. So long story short, it was always a lot of gatherings and it was always a lot of music and food around and 
my mom would just be so kind to everybody. Like she would literally just see people on the street and just start talking to them all the time. And you know, when you were a little kid and you like, mom, like, come on, let's go. Like, I want, I'm gonna go home and watch TV and play my video games and blah, blah, blah. Like my mom would just literally, she never gave up. She never stopped talking. She just would, you know, talk and do what she do and just network and mingle and doing all these little things that I was just picking up on as a kid and I didn't even realize like I would end up you know using it myself and it would be necessary but you know I learned a lot from just watching her talk to people and you know say hi and smile and just you know just be with the people and you know so be social and stuff like that's where I got a lot of my social skills from my mom so um that was like you know some of my upbringing and then like I, I was always the oldest cousin, so I had that leadership role in me since I was a kid too, you know? Um, like anything me and my cousins did, like I was started up, like whether we was playing manhunt or whether we was just, it, it don't matter what we was doing, like even the bad shit, I'm gonna be honest, yeah, like I was the one that was like, yeah, y'all, we should do this, like, you feel me? But um, yeah, so it was like a part of that, that leadership and then a part of that, um, social stuff that my mom was doing, you know, the social skills and the leadership skills, kind of, I combined it and I just found like what I wanted to do and what I was comfortable with. And that's how I kind of got into the music. Um, so tell us what role you play in music and a little bit about what you do. Copy, yeah, so like I said, bro, that, that is one of my favorite questions. Like, you know, like, what do you even do? Um, Cause as mysterious as I, like to be sometimes like I also want people to know what I what I bring to the table and what I can do. So what I consider myself really like I always start off with is an A&R and A&R from you know my understanding being in the field so far is research and development like artist research and development. So basically what you're doing is you find an artist um, and you helping them develop their art in whatever way whether it be like um, like their image or their music itself or whatever like so you pretty much like um, like his side you know like his side ear like you giving him like you know some feedback on what to improve or what to change what looks good and whatever like you like his ear to the streets basically like because obviously an artist can't always be everywhere and know everything that they may need that's gonna take them you know so you kind of just give them that extra um, like that extra push in whatever direction they need. So that's where I kind of started. And then I went into management. So I started managing like kids from my neighborhood. And then after that, um, people was like, like after I stopped managing certain people and I started just, you know, doing like solo things, people was like, yo, you really, you really um, like are good at this, um, you know, just, finding good artists and like actually, you know, doing projects and doing all these different things. Like you take, you take it serious. Like you really, you know what I'm saying? It looks good, what you doing? And it was pretty much like helping artists build up their platform. And then I was getting respect for doing that. Um, so that's pretty much like, you know, the second niche that I went into, that was management. And now I'm just into like, um, curating curating events as well so I wouldn't say like an event coordinator but it's like all in the realm of like music production kind of like you know like artist development um artist management and events you know that's like what I mainly focus on so I, I would say like music production um is like you know my title or my pat uh, um excuse me like you know my field that I'm in like what you were categorizing me in like just a producer basically um because I'm gonna just do whatever I gotta do really like you know if you add me on your team you'll see like I'm gonna play whatever role if you need me to be the if you need me to hold you hold the DJ set and the DJ case one day I'm gonna do that you know what I'm saying if you need me to you know, like sometimes I had to get people, they fool, you know, Uber Eats outside. Like, can you get the food real quick? Like, I'll do that, you know? I'm a team player, bro, for real, so. 
whatever, whatever I gotta do, bro, I'm gonna do it. It's nothing. I don't be. I don't. I don't take anything like personal, or I don't ever think I'm too big to do what you know is necessary for the team to win. So, aside me being like a producer, I'm everything you need on your team. Like, just just find out. How did you get in the business of being a talent agent? This is some good question, bro. How did I get in the business? So, like, yeah, I was saying a little bit before, um, you know, like, I spoke about my upbringing and, like, what kind of led me. Fun, like, quick story, like, um, one time I had got in trouble as a kid because I was trying to, like, help somebody get, like, a little weed to smoke. And I was, like, middleman in it. And, you know, so, long story short, my family always probably seen like the the how you say like the liaison in me or like the middleman talent skills in me like you know the the, the, the cons consultation skills and the business skills like my family kind of seen it but they didn't really know neither did i at the time but like you know what i'm saying we didn't know what i was gonna end up doing but like i just kept following like what i was comfortable doing and following my path and like I ended up here, you know, so I'm just seeing where it takes me pretty much. Um, but how did I get in the business? Uh, like I was saying before, like I got in the business just basically like networking, bro. Like networking is powerful because I always used to even back when I made the um, back when I made the middleman transaction for the weed. Like I always used to think in my room like, like I want to I want to make money and I want to be productive, but I don't want to. Um, work like I want to be a free person that can just you know have the ability to do what I want to do when I want to do it and for me this is this is 24 7 regardless so it's more than a job in a nine to five but I wanted to have the freedom to work with people across the world whenever whatever whenever about you know that's that's my bop like I really want to do that I want to work with people all over three in the morning I'll be I'll be like, thank God, bro, you know? I be making connections and money three, four, five in the morning all around the clock. So it's like, that's just a blessing to me. Um, just me and people talking to me. I, like, I wouldn't be able to passionately do that anywhere else, you know? So I just got in the business doing that, bro. Networking and networking, meeting people. And I just never stopped. I've been doing that for like the past three years. How was it working with Brooklyn artist 917 Racks? Racks, Racks, Racks. Hey, he's one of my favorite artists. He's one of my favorite artists coming up right now. Um, I told him when he had like 10K followers, I told him, yo, bro, you gonna be good. You, you gonna make it like I see you making it or whatever. It was only like a couple months later. like, And I'm not gonna say I've been right about mad artists. I've been right about a couple um, like, saying they gonna make it, shout out like Spender Gambino and a couple other people, but like I told Rax he was gonna get a blue check and he was gonna be good and all that, like, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I basically was telling him you gonna be in the industry and he was there in a couple months later. That's that's my guy, I fuck with him. I fuck with his manager, OD, um, his manager, Fresh, is mad cool, bro. Um, they showed me nothing but love, like, and I got another session with them coming up, so. Stay tuned for that. Who are some of the artists you've worked with? Some of the, okay, yeah, I know everybody want to know this question too. Who's some of the artists I worked with? Um, Well, I worked with, I mean, like I haven't worked with everyone yet, you know, but like I've met a lot of people, but some of the art, I'm gonna say some of the artists I worked with and, and some of the artists I met that I want to work with. So some of the artists I worked with is like Jay Crit, Stunner. Um, I helped my boy do like certain events with other artists. Like he did Ross Swish. Uh, he just did Be Love. He just did. We about to do a C Blue show in Jersey. About to do Shy E K show. Um, you know, like there's so many artists in New York that I worked with. Um, Jay Critch was probably like the biggest artist that I worked with. That opportunity was like, you know, the best opportunity that I got. One of the best opportunities that I got so far, for sure. Um, I went to Rolling Loud and I ended up meeting so many artists that I want to work with. Bro, it's not even funny. Like, 
I remember Sauce Walker was like really fucking with me, bro. He was already fucking with like a New York kid. And then when he saw me, it was just like a vibe and he DM'd me after the show. It was like, that shit was crazy. Uh, I know I'm forgetting people. Um, I, I, Dave East, um, he's one of the best artists yeah, that like, you know, I've been out with and stuff, been around in multiple times, like stuff like that. Just having that experience and seeing them, like how they move and stuff and like, you know. Um, I remember, I remember one of my favorite rappers, G Herbo, too. That was good. Um, but yeah, like, I want to work with more people, you know. It's coming soon. We see, oh, that was it. Copy. Got you. It's major, and those are my great questions. It's major, and it's my crate vision. So my crate vision would be to have a team full of um, dope artists, but not only dope artists, like dope, young, inspiring executives like myself that, you know, help these artists, Excuse me. that help these artists like, um, you know, make certain plays and kind of like fill in a role that I was just mentioning of just being like a team player and, you know, doing what we have to do to help these artists get to the next level. And I would have, I would kind of like rotate them often. Like, so I would say not like, not like P Diddy's making a band, but kind of like a rotation of artists coming in and out of my agency, kind of helping them take them from, you know, being an independent artist and helping them build to getting signed and getting contracts and getting deals. And then doing that again with another set of artists, you know? So kind of like um, when I was playing ball, we call it like AAU, we had like, you know, we're kind of like the college coaches recruit you and it's like you just, con I want to just be constantly uplifting the next generation continues, you know, continuously um, with my agency pretty much. So, you know, keep signing people over and over again. And, you know, obviously we're going to maintain relationships and see people through their careers as well. You know, I'm, I'm in it for the long term and the relationships as well. But I want to, like I said, help the next generation go from here to there. If I don't make it, I, it's a thousand ways to get paid, so don't worry, I'm gonna be good. Like, it, this work ethic is non-stop. Like, I got ADHD, I don't, people tell you probably I post all day, I'm probably annoying. So if I don't make it here, I'm gonna be good somewhere, I swear to God. This ain't stopping, shit. It's major, and that's my craving. What's going on, y'all? This your boy Major, and it's my crate tribute. All right. Hey, I better not get up here and embarrass myself, man. Like, <laughs> I used to shoot like 50 some percent in basketball. Let's see how I do. All right, uh, first question. What was Pop Smoke's first album called? A, Shoot for the Stars, B, Meet the Woo, C, Flossy Star, or D, Bible? Hmm. You said, I, wait, he had a mixtape though. It's a mi uh, I think, now his first project was Meet the Woo. But the first album was True for the Stars. Nah, I, 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 wait, damn. See, I'm fucking up already, this is bad. Rest in peace, Pop Smoke too. damn. I'm gonna I'm 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 have to go with, I'm gonna I'm stick with my original thought, it's B, Meet the Woo. Not nah, all right. What is Eminem's real name? Um, okay, so we got A, James Tony, we got B, Lance Smalls, we got C, Marshall Bruce Mathers, and we got D, Slim Shady. Yo, shout out my teammate for loving this man so much because you literally just saved me, big boy. You know who you are, the big, the big man on my team. That nigga used to love Eminem. He was like a lumberjack kid. This nigga used to love him. Um, but I'm gonna go with C, Marshall Bruce Mathers. Imagine I did all that and I was wrong. <laughs> hey yo, all right, where we at? What West Coast artist album was called the documentary? Ooh, this is a good one. Wait, ooh, yes. I, 
she got you got to pay attention and got cuz I if I embarrass myself that's a bad look for hip hop I ain't gonna lie like, I can't do that but let me read this A Snoop Dogg B Nipsey Hussle C YG or D the game and I'm gonna have to go with D the game Pretty sure about that one what female artist came out with the song Try Me? Oh, that used to be my shit too. That didn't try me. Yeah, high school vibes. I ain't gonna lie, that shit came out when I went to my new high school. Yeah, I remember that. Music is really nostalgic. Like it brings back certain times in your life. Like I used to really bump that going to school. But where? So we got A, Tink. We got B, Foxy Brown. C, Dage Low, and D, Cardi B. All of these some dope female artists too, by the way, but it's C Days Low. For a fact, I remember that song. Like 2014, I think. This we trying to, this the hard one. I knew it was one that was going. Who produced Who produced Nas album King Disease? Oh, that's the new one too. You gotta know that, brother. Let's go. Okay. It's either A Hit Boy, B Hitmaker. C, Kanye West, or D, Swiss B? I think it's between A and B is Hit Boy and Hit Maker. What's his, I know. What's his name though? He's hot, he's hot. I know it's, I think, I think I'm gonna go with B, Hit Maker, Hit Maker. And then we a wrap. This major, and that was my crate trivia. Hip hop's crate, get your crate ready.